Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel. And I got new little sword pins for my hair. So that's why I look like this because I thought it was super cute. Okay. So today we are going to be checking out this white dwarf, which is issue 495. It says, um, the fourth tyrannic war unfolds, the great devourer. So I'm sure we're going to have some nice lovely tyranids in here. And then it says there's new rules for boarding actions, kill team, and cities of Sigmar in Warcry. And then 14 page designer notes on the origins, creation, and design of the Tyranids. So if you're a Tyranid fan, then you might want to pick up this white dwarf. And then it has some free inside scenarios and photo backdrop and bunker bingo card sheets and kill team jungle deck. So that is what we're going to do today. Alrighty, hello Lyle Lowry. The Leviathan. The Imperium is embroiled in the fourth tyrannic war with Hive Fleet Leviathan penetrating primarily Sigmentum Specificus and Tempestus from below the galactic plane. The apparent threat to the galaxy is immense, and yet the entire might of the Tyranids is still unknown. An ex existential threat is a great way to end the year, isn't it? Hmm? Brush up on your Tyranids knowledge, and that's what we're here for you. Thank you. On top of that, it says we present the most comprehensive look at the Tyranids model range to ever appear in White Dwarf. Ooh, look at, back at 30 years of history and see how the hive mind has changed and adapt. That sounds like a lot of fun. I was just chatting with someone yesterday about we hope that there's going to be new um, gargoyle models coming out uh, to get them off their fly bases and I don't know, just improve their look. I want to play gargoyles with a Herodin, um, big dragon tyranid from white uh, from um forge world when i because i'm building a tyranids list right now and practicing tyranids in 10th edition which you'll see soon when we put out a white a um battle report on it ah uh, is that cute knew someone would do something with this guy a diorama yuletide at bugmanson's by sam davies super cute they're all using different mugs oh my god <laughs> ghost oh she's great and they've got little red cheeks because they're drunk so cute super cute getting ahead in the hobby Painting question, the Mechanicus of Dimos. Oh, we've got this color scheme for uh, Dimos. And the paint scheme for that. It's a, nice, it's a pretty paint scheme, it is. A pretty looking on a Gadoon crawler by Lee Gardner. How tidy, how tidy it is painted. Like the blue and gold on his, um, on his, a neutron laser. Model of the month, Orc Old Blood on Carno Squig by Lawrence East. I enjoy that. Look at all those pretty, that pretty base looks really nice too. With random Necron, someone. Well, some kind of ruins sticking out. Now oh, Imotech. All right, and uh, Amelda Braskov, Dagne Holdenstock, Octrin Glimsy, and Qualitas the Exile by Laurent Lethulier, I believe. Um, these are cursed city models looking lovely. Nice. All right, it says, Worlds of Warhammer, what's in a name? A study of etym etymology in the mortal realms. And Lila Appleton, Leela Appleton, sorry, is 
chatting about uh, etymology and companies a company encompasses the evolution of words within a language over the course of time. Though many in the age of Sigmar share language due to their common ancestry and descent from Sigmar's pantheon, each race still has different naming conventions and dialects, much like in the world around us. In this column, we will take a deep dive into character names from some of the factions and exploring how the writing team approaches creating them. Hmm. So Stormcast Eternals, Seraphon, Orc War Clans, Gloomspite Gits, Magakin of Nurgle, Head of Knights of Slanash, Soul, Soul Blight, Grave Lords, Ossiarch, Bone Reapers. Oh, and access granted. Also with Leela. Access granted the White Dwarf Bunker, the world's biggest and best Warhammer club. Uh, as the campaign hurtles towards its final result, I've been thinking about the winners. Of course, there is the winning faction, but we'll also bestow titles on individuals based on how they performed as a player. These are vital for narrative play as placing just as much importance on the journey taken to the finish line. Challenges. The various challenges with the bunker. Do, do, do. Slide, crown, sundering, drain, lake. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Cute. Knight and Cantor. Bone Root Stomp Gargant by Lyle Lowry. Gargants. I like the tattoos on their bellies. Narkit Stickers by Andy Thomas Clark. Ah, uh, what is. Uh, this uh, defense neck is a uh, mission. Defense nexus. A mission for your bunker for Warhammer 40k and a battle plan for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Oh, what is this? Kill Team Jungle Warfare. I wonder if it'll be anything like Death World Forest. Do 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 do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's Deepest, darkest December, which in White Dwarf production terms means we're in the middle of a sweltering, steaming summer. It is, an, is it any wonder, then, that we were inspired to come up with some rules for playing Kill Team in the jungle? It's a classic sci-fi trope. A group of hard-as-nails warriors go into the jungle on a secret mission. Said warriors find an equally hard-as-nails foe who also happens to be super sneaky. The two forces engage in a covert war in a hazardous environment where everything they touch is deadly, so some similar to Death World Forest. There is much collateral, da collateral damage to the vegetation. Veterans of many wars perish until one side emerges. Victorious. Classic. Introducing jungle cards. Hmm. To recreate these dangerous jungle missions, we've created a set of six cards for you to use in your games of Kill Team. We've included such classics as Hidden Traps, Hanging Creepers, and the monstrous Katachan Devil. If you stand still, they'll get you. If you move, they'll get you. If you shoot, you guessed it. In fact, you'll have to work very hard to stay alive. Opposite, you'll find rules for using these cards in your games, plus suggestions for other ways to use them. Perhaps you could try them out in a pick-up game at your next club night or incorporate them into a campaign or league. Good luck in the jungle! Da -da, jungle cards. Combine them with the deception presented cards presented in White Dwarf 492 for total battlefield carnage. That would totally be the way to play Kill Team. Total battlefield carnage. Who knows who's going to... I really enjoyed back when they did the Death World Forest. It's like, you just have to survive. That's the goal. And I'm assuming this would be a similar way. Let's read one of them. The Katachan Devil. Katachan Devils are large, territorial carnivores that take on the appearance of gigantic millipedes fused with the claws, mandibles, and stingers of scorpions. Regular scorpions aren't good enough. They will not hesitate to pounce on an unsuspecting foe, no matter how large or deadly. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Sounds super fun. Oh, imagine doing the, the little the board for this jungle with like just the the 
the allusion. What am I looking for? The taste that the word escapes me. That the I don't, the word escapes me, but the hint, suggestion, that's the word I was thinking of, I think. The suggestion of Katachan devils inside the terrain that you make. Can't quite see. What is a terra squirrel? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got distracted. Terra squirrel. It's, it's spelt P-T-E-R-A, so pterodactyl, but terra squirrel. A mission into a jungle infested with terror squirrels is a virtual death sentence, for these creatures are perhaps amongst the deadliest of all. These carnivorous creatures will pounce on any potential prey should they catch the scent of blood. <laughs> you know what's not intimidating? Flying squirrels. Until they're called terror squirrels. Basic training. Getting the most out of the charge phase. So, welcome to another installment of our tactics series, where we provide you with knowledge and strategies to help you become a better player. But, on the war-torn battlefields of the 41st millennium, or the chaos-tainted landscapes of the mortal realms, in this issue, we begin to tackle one of the most important and often, often misunderstood phases of the game, the charge phase. I think any of this would be great. Great training, I would imagine. I'm very curious now what like one of their what what one of their suggestions are. This is for Age of Sigmar. What is for 40k? Pile in or not? Orosa. Oh, was it only for Age of Sigmar? Well, the Unleash Hell is for Age of Sigmar. Let's see. Do, 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 do. As always, movement and positioning are key in Warhammer Age of Sigmar because you will almost certainly need to move your models at some point to attack enemy units and contest objectives, thereby scoring victory points. There are two phases in the game when you can move at the named movement phase and of course the charge phase which is ways to get into combat into close range with an objective by sneaking in with the charge phase so all of that is pretty handy i am sure blocking movement mm, i have done that i have done that and have had that done to me blocking movement so that they can't get to an objective. Beware the long distance piling. Hmm. Um, yeah, the War Flesh Hands Ravs. Was it? Something like that. I could do that or something. What is that? All right, super fun. Uh, hobby hangout. Exploring the mystery and mysterious art of Xanathal highlighting. Which I very much see the advantage of, but I am just careful about my zenithal highlighting. I don't do it as others tend to do. And that I like to um, zenithal highlight the underbelly, not with black and white, rarely ever with black and white. But it is a great way to get things done quickly for sure. Hmm. And hobby hacks. This little box features useful tips for, from members of the studio and hobbyists out there in the wide world. This issue, we tackle painting clear cockpit canopies. <laughs> Try saying that fast. That's nice. Love these little tips. And creating a gradient. They did up, uh, they did something nice, which is um, instead of the it being on the bottom, they painted upward. Painted the light coming from below, which is pretty nice for a demonic hound. And then overhead light source, painting from down below. And yeah, why not dry brush it instead? Which has a new um, name called slap chopping. All right, celestial, celestial highlighting. Studio editor. Stuart Nichols used a pre-shading technique to paint the Storm Drake Guard in his Hallowed Knight's army. We asked him how he went about achieving that effect. 
three answers there. Satellite uplink, show off your gods of war and club news from around the world. Bunker of the month, qui commence? Besong Kong. Besong Kong. I hope I said that well. Uh, in our club news this issue, we travel to France, where Julian Brenny runs a wargaming shop that's got a strong Warhammer following. Ooh, qui commence? Pretty looking stuff. Must have taken a picture from the bunker. Nice. Black Templars. By Arno Arnold? Chenet? Chenez? Nice Black Templars. On a nice Martian base. Looking nice. Looking good. Also, chose for him to be on a different base than the original, or um, the one that doesn't. He kept the the orc for some more thing else, which is what I did as well. Araman by Julian Brenny. Oh, Julian Brenny, the owner of the wargaming shop, painted this one. I like it. Very nice Araman. Nice green effects that he was did on his stuff. Um, Broodlord by Alexandre Jouffroy. That's cool. Look at that guy. Look what they, he did with... Who is this down below him? Is that a town? No, no, that's a space marine. Oh, I see. A reaver by the look of his helmet. Cute little... um. Tubes. Plant tubes. Oh, wow, look at that Morathi by Jimbo Worth. Oh, Frosty Morathi. Very yellow spot. Interesting little step base. Huh. That's cool. Ooh, nice. A Night Desecrator by Adam Barnes. Do you see that? He has got little handprints all over the bottom. That's pretty awesome. That must have been fun or horrifying to paint. I'm not sure which, but that is great. What a great little detail. I like that a lot. Oh my gosh. I love those wings with the little speckles, little spots. I love that little extra detail. Pretty. Ooh, Angron. Angron, Demon Primarch of Corn by Caleb Weissenbeck. I think. Nice. Nice. I like that effect on the sword. And the, the sort of mono tone to the coloring underneath. Muted color, uh, muted saturation. Cool. And she is so pretty. Oh, look at the beetle. Ah, oh, the beetle is looking good. A celestial beetle. That is a really nice color. This is Alariel the Ever Everqueen by Helen Hickman. Helen, you have made such a Pretty, pretty L'Oreal. Love it. So pretty. I can, I can get behind that beetle. For anyone who is <laughs> familiar with my history, I am a Sylvaneth player as well. And I have not put together my L'Oreal because I don't like the beetle. Um, but this is such a pretty beetle, I have to say. So pretty. And so is she. A pretty artwork. I'd be proud to have Alariel with her beetle looking like that. Inspired. The internal war for the conquest of the mortal realm. Seize the crown. So we've got a battle plan 
featuring a trio of narrative battles to mark the end of the Slide Crown Sundering campaign. Okay, dokie. Do 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 boop do boop boop do boop boop. Up upon magic, civilized and wild. The nature of magic amongst order and destruction. So what do we have here? Dig your fingers into the soil. Feel as earth clumps together, even as it pours through your fingers. This isn't some jade wizard's tree clutching sermon. Use some base cunning and listen. Hi, despot. I wonder what this is. Uh, the Chasms of Galat. The Caradron encounter a nest of perfidious Skaven. Mm. Ah. Let's drop it of a story. Heroes of Civilization, new quests and campaign rules for Cities of Sigmar Warbands in Warcry, which is not surprising that it's coming. So, um, because of all the Cities of Sigmar models that came out, so who do we have? The Cities of Sigmar Dawnbringers. Before setup, if a player is using Cities of Sigmar Warband, then that player can choose for their Warband to be Dawnbringers. If they do, after deployment, they must determine the site that has been scouted for a Dawnbringer settlement. Ooh. Sites of power. At the start of the first battle round, the player of the Cities of Sigmar Warband picks a point on the battlefield uh, floor to be a site of power. Place a marker there to remind you. Then roll a dice on the City of Sites of Power table to determine what type of site of power it is. Each type confers a bonus with Cities of Sigmar rune mark as shown here. So the Sites of Power, here we are. Hmm, interesting. I wonder how much power it would give to the Cities of Sigmar player if they get a little control of every random um, layout that they get. It depends on what it does, I suppose. One option is the Corrupted Font. Each time a fighter with the Cities of Sigmar rune mark is taken down while within three inches of a Corrupted Font, the controller player gains one wild dice. I mean, that's that's not... That's all right, um, not excessively powerful, so that's okay. A geomantic well at the end of a battle round, if there are more friendly fighters with the Cities of Sigmar rune mark within three inches of a geomantic well than enemy fighters, you roll an extra initiative dice in the next in initiative phase. That means that is a bit more powerful. You could gain a better initiative. Well, not necessarily, um, but have a possible extra. Bit. Well, it's an advantage. It's mild. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's fine. Mingled ley lines. Once per battle round, after a fighter with the Cities of Sigmar room art makes an action, if their controller player has any unused ability dice, they can say that their fighter will attempt to harness the power of the ley lines. When they do so, that player picks one of their doubles or triples to risk and then rolls the dice. Add one to the roll if the value of that ability dice was greater than the current battle round. On a roll of four plus, if a double was risked, it is improved to a triple. And if a triple was risked, it is improved to a quad. Otherwise, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the roll plus the battle round number. Well, that's, that's actually pretty cool. Um, it's all about luck. And anyone can be lucky or unlucky. So that's, that's all right. Mortifex Nadir, when a fighter with the Cities of Sigmar rune mark within three inches of a Mortifex Nadir come, uh, would use an ability, the player rolls each of those ability dice instead. So two dice for a double, three for a triple, and so on. If the total roll is 10 or more, the Mortifex Nadir is sealed until the end of the battle round. While a Mortifex Nadir is sealed, fighters that do not have the Cities of Sigmar rune mark cannot use abilities but I suppose there is a lot of rolling to it, but turning off your opponent of turning off your opponent's abilities could be quite nasty, but you know, you have to actually get that and then you have to get that. So it's only one game for Warcry and Warcry should be played in multiple games. So yeah, 
Celestial Lodestone. Once per battle round, before a friendly fighter with the Cities of Sigmar rumor makes an action, if that fighter is within three inches of a Celestial Lodestone, you can say that they will seek heavenly guidance if you do so. Roll up to 12 dice. For each roll of five plus, you can pick one double, triple, or quad and change the value of those dice to six those dice. After that, for each roll of one, you must pick one double, triple, or quad and change the value of those dice to one. Yeah, this is just a wee little possible bonus. And it's possible that the Sea of Sigmar fellows themselves would need this bonus just to be on the same level of power as some of the other ones, which could be generically more powerful anyway. A sacrificial god's mouth. Each time an enemy fighter that does not have the Cities of Sigmar rune mark is taken down while within three inches of a sacrificial god's mouth, you gain one wild dice. Okay. It's, um, it gives them an advantage, but quite minorly so, sometimes. If there are multiple players using Cities of Sigmar Dawnbringer Warbands, the players roll off and each player picks a point. Creating a uh, new one. Mm -hmm. Artifacts of the Crusade. Artifacts is for when you're playing campaigns. Cities of Sigmar quests and quest battle plans. Oh, oh is that it? I was just expecting some dudes. Okay. That must be somewhere else that you have the dudes. Maybe in one of the other white dwarfs that I don't recall. Or maybe maybe there's a download online for free. Probably that. Alright, a tale of four warlords. Um we have from the looks of it we've got world eaters. Some kind of space marines. The chaos cultists. And whatever in the world you are. What interesting guys. So I'm going to master military. Let's find out. Return of the Iron Butchers. World Eaters sub thing. James Ashby, for this month's challenge, I decided to revisit the Iron Butcher's Chaos Space Marines. I painted for the challenge in issue 487. Nice. I like that. I like the red that you use. So bloody. That is an interesting looking fellow. You must have done. Yep, it's a dark apostle, but using. Um, guy, I recognize those swords from the dark commune. Yeah, I swapped. Yeah, he did a, a cool custom build. I like the faces that you use. Is that that is totally um. Skull mask from Necropolis stalkers. Um, for Asiarch Bone Reapers on those. What what a great cost, uh, custom build of these guys. Looks awesome. Return of the Ingeniators with the Kin. Now at 2,000 points, I decided to pivot back to my Ingeniator Space Marines for this month's challenge. Cool. I set myself a high bar to paint the entire power armored half of the Leviathan box set. Lots of cutting, snipping, and scraping later. Nice. Mm -hmm. They absolutely remind me of a color scheme for uh, Legions of Votan. Look at all those lovely marines done. I like that terrain too. That's um, a conglomeration of imperial terrain with that new one. I like. I just like the look of that tan color scheme on the terrain. Looks great. Heralds of the Plague Fleet by Rue James. So we have 
Um, I've always loved the mere mortals who inhabit the Imperium, and my favourite among them are the traitors. Something brave and tragic about the cults and regiments that dare to defy the totalitarian, totalitarian Imperium, only to once again find themselves in service, service to tyrants and monsters. Looks good. I like that uh, sentinel. <laughs> this little fella. He looks great. Mm. There's a colour scheme for the sentinel too. I like the patchiness that he's got going on these bums. Operation Argentus. Praise and glory to the machine god. Ah, I would not have guessed that. But I guess now I can see the... I can see that fellow now. I've taken a slight meandering stroll off the map this time, straying away from my beloved mil Astro Militarum. But did you? Did you? Are these supposed to be servitors? Maybe they are. And setting my sights on some allies. For this challenge, I picked up an Adeptus Mechanicus combat troll and a few Necromunda kits and got stuck in. Andy Barlow. 01011001. <laughs> I've con done a lot of converting this month with my Catafron destroyers being built from Jotun H grade industrial servitor ogrins. Okay, so these are supposed to be Catafron destroyers. Cute. You did not veer away from your Astra Militarum. <laughs> you absolutely kept it in there. Very nice looking uh, Anagar Dune Crawler. I like that. My Skitarian Rangers and Tech Priest Engency are made from ash waste nomad nomads with Skitari arms. Mm hmm And I even painted two commissars from my Astra Militarum Force and converted an Auspex Reconnaissance tank. I'll use it as a manticore that I've dubbed the Hippogriff. Oh, pretty. Whatever is in the back that looks like a satellite. Super pretty. And what is it supposed to be though? If you're doing admec. Eh, well. I guess you just added no, 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 no. Okay, so you added an ally in for your Astro Militarum. Okay. Argentus Elite is pretty. That's pretty too. The Techno Barbarians of Dicurnus Six. Looks lovely. That's great. Have fun. A strong defense. Boarding actions get a whole lot deadlier with these mission rules. I don't think I'll go through the mission rules for these boarding action missions. But cool. Ah, nice. I do very much like all these map layouts for boarding actions. The fourth tyrannic war, the Imperium brings arms to bear against High Fleet Leviathan. <laughs> Chatting about what has been happening. Cast your system, what's been happening. I'll go over it. Xenos phenomena. Grim prospects. Admiral Krastenberg's counteroffensive. Galactic encroachment. The Diabolus Extremist Imperial Empiric Anomaly Confirmed. Mm. The Great Devour, an in-depth look at the design and creation of the Tyranids. We're looking lovely these days. Versus some uh, Leagues of Otan in this one. Oh, four decades of Tyranid invasions. <gasps> we get to see old-fashioned Tyranids. I have an old metal Tyranid. I have no idea what it is. It's so tiny. I think it's a high, it could be a current fix or it could be a higher tyrant. All right, look at this guy, he's so cute. Look at him, he's so cute. He also looks oops, I'm moving it. He also looks like he is really needs something to eat. He's so scrawny. The first Tyranid model. Designed by Nick Bibby, appears in Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. The 
The bestiary section describes tyranids as having six limbs and organic weapons, which are clearly visible on this model. Oh my gosh, he looks like a raptor that hasn't eaten in weeks. And then Space Hulk, the original one. Codex Tyranids, Epic Hive War, the First Tyranid Army, Advanced Space Crusades. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> this guy's got buck teeth. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Big changes. With Big Muddle's third edition rebirth, Battle for McCrag. I remember the box set Battle for McCrag. Bio Titan. Dig for Victory. When was the Trigon came out? 2010. 2010. I wonder if they're going to do a new Trigon. I mean, this fellow, there's nothing wrong with it. I suppose there's no big reason to do it, but it'd be kind of cool. This big, the Tyrannofex in 2012. I don't even remember. This was like around the time that I started. Around here is I guess when I started. I hadn't gotten into it with Battle McCraig. But I have these Tyranids. Probably those guys too. And I have some Tyranid around was this old for sure around this time all right parasite of more tricks definitely i remember when that came out brand new the year of the tentacle 2014 when the toxic green came out wings and guns what is this 2014 this that's kind of felt like it was an older model than 2014 the Brood Lord, do you remember that? The Fourth Tyrannic War, 2023. All these new Tyranid models. Oh my. I'm gonna read through that more, I suppose. Adaptation is the key to survival. Oh, look at that. You are here. And there's the rippers. All right, then we've got the hot sizes, large scale invasions, the sizes. Of these guys. Okay. So the Trigon. I thought so. The tri I had. I don't think I set, stood them up next to each other. The Trigon uh, or Malak is slightly taller than the Norn Emissary. Look at these artworks. Jess Goodwin. Cool. Despite these sketches being almost 30 years old, many of the design elements shown here are still recognizable in the Tyranid miniatures today. Most notably the bioweapons, fused ribs, carapace shapes, and lictors, feeding tendrils, and even its cloven hooves. These are great. Look at that. Well, the rule of six. Hormigant, Barbgant, Death Leaper. I really like that. I mean, he's like a... I don't know. He's like a super villain Tyranid with his, his... He's just great. I don't know how much the people who absolutely adore the lore for Tyranids like the Death Leaper because he's like a super villain. Cape-wearing superhero. But I really like the look of him. Spore chimneys and heat sinks. Huh, oh, we got some... Got some names that I probably didn't know. Heat sinks. That's what they're called. Heat sinks. Now I know how to properly call them. Heat sinks. Thorax mounted spine fists. Adrenal glands. Weapon bio umbilicals. Spiracles. Oh. The little holes in their heads are called spiracles. I think. Carapace battle damage, parasite mortric crest, head and cheek armor, zoanthrope exposed brain, biovore head carapace, spiracles, flexible joints, abdominal claws, 
compound eyes. How many have compound eyes? Do they? I don't think so. Uh, feeder tendrils. Trifurcated neck. On the little um, zoanthropes. Neurocyte. These little creepy guys. Drool cannon. And bifurcated spine. Bifurcated spine. Our super support chimneys and heat sinks. Tyranids emit considerable heat on account of their biology. The larger the beast, the more heat they radiate. The hive mind, however, has developed ways to deal with this. Now I kind of want to make them look like they're, I don't know, on ice and every step that they take is actually melting. That would be pretty cool. Oh, look at all of this. Look at this. All right. Ah, look at, okay. So for anyone who's trying to remember all of the different weapons and figure out what weapon is which so they can put it onto their model correctly we finally have well they might have done it once or twice but this is all in one place this is nice the flesh bore the spike rifle the spine fist the spore mine the strangle web the devourer the death spitter the barb launcher the spine maw the shock cannon the barb strangler the strangle thorn cannon the impaler cannon the shard launcher the asp maw the bioelectric pulse the Stinger Salvo, the Flesh Borer Hive, the Venom Cannon, the Drool Cannon, the Heavy Venom Cannon, the Rupture Cannon, the Bioplasmic Cannon, the Acid Spray, the Spore, more lines, the spore Mine Launcher, the Flame Spurt Cannon, the Mace Tail, the Massive Crushing Claws, the Monstrous Scything Talons, the Bone Saber, the Monstrous Bone Sword, the distensible jaw, the lictor talon, the rending claw, the scything talon, massive toxic lashes, the lash whip, the flesh hooks, the toxic injector harpoon, and the feeder tendrils. Ah, the Norn Emissary. I really like the Norn Emissary's look. I have got to get this lady painted. She's my queen. The Norn Assimilator is the king, and the Norn Emissary is my queen. I know there's a Tyranid queen, but she's my queen. She's my queen. Industrial evolution. Humanity's fear for the future of technology. Probably valid. So that was super fun. I had to go through that more, more thoroughly. My lord, it is with grave concern that I commend these words to your attention in the hope that they reach your current deployment unsullied by taint, says Part 1, Tecamarine of the Seventh Brotherhood for the Scrutiny of Grandmaster Leoric. Mm, I'm gonna have to go through that. Fun. Super fun. <laughs> Are the Cursed Sons, a strike force of Lamenters, Space Marines by Chris Lewis. Oh, nice. <laughs> With a little bleeding hearts on their shoulders. Cool. Uh, that's the mission. And the Jungle Warfare cards that were mentioned. And bingo! White Dwarf Bunker Bingo for 2024. Rank and file, bunker game, leader and heroes, bunker game, bunker game, bunker game, bunker game. Ooh. Army gallery. Why yellow? That's what my wife says whenever I paint my heart. Oh, why yellow? I thought it was saying why yellow. Why yellow? Chris Lewis. Why yellow? Well, yellow has gotten a lot simpler, I think, from back in the day. But I bet he knows how to do yellow. Look at all those bleeding hearts. How pretty. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Look at these lovely little impulses. The dark purple does have a really nice touch, as does the, as does the bleeding hearts, of course. Mm. Wow, all those checker patterns. Oh my goodness, all those checker patterns. Okay. I 
I was about to say checker patterns are not for me, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe 10 years down the road, I'm like, you know what? Checker patterns. I'm there. Not today. Even though they look, they look lovely. Yes. These guys look lovely. Very much enjoy this Redemptor Dreadnought. He looks lovely. As does this look like an aberrant. Oh, it's the abomination big aberrant guy. I don't remember what his name is. Oh, he's got a cute little purple knee with a little uh, plasma cannon. He's purple too. It's very pretty. Super pretty. That is a very pretty Blade Guard Ancient. And of course, the Tech Marine is red and the Apothecary is white with a couple little details that add to them. And the Chaplain is black. Huh. That looks like a Stormcast Eternal head that he put on there. Mm, nice. I mean, I personally very much enjoy the, the Skull Helm of the Chaplain, but it does look good. Visions of Warhammer, a series of spectacular dioramas created by Rodrigo Lucas Frias. A hobbyist from Spain. Cool. Oh, old fashioned Necrons. Oh, look at that glow effect. Lovely. I see how the scarabs are painted with different colors. Pretty. Pretty. It's a very unusual shape that we're going with. I don't know what exactly is happening. A family walk. That's cute. I like it. I like the old metal you have going on there. So nice. With a bit of snow around, I think. Boom! Nice. The book. I take a lot of inspiration from other painters, as you can see in this diorama, which was inspired by Michael Pisarski's winning Golden Demon entry, The Tribute. This is the book. Look at that fellow. That, um, uh, a lot of it is from Nagash. Yeah. Look at him. He's great. This, this is lovely. How nice. I love this little effect that you have going on too. And the glow around it. What is it? Oh my goodness, the book with someone trying to come out of it. This is all beautiful. Hmm. Some fire slayers fighting Skaven in mines. I love that. I love the, the color done to it. Such beautiful artwork. Ah, nice. Oh, and it's supposed to be um, sand being blown after, like um, Mad Max style. Ah, lovely. And all the lighting is very yellow. All the highlighting is yellow because he's out in the sun and sand. These are great. So great. Flying high. <laughs> It's great. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, I hope so much fun was put into doing these. This is all lovely. Oh, it's so nice. Just love these dioramas with a little story. I've got to do one. I really do. They're so fun. I haven't told a story, it feels, in an artwork in a while. I've got to do it. It's so great. It's so inspiring. Iron and Chains. House Goliath attempts to seize control of the vital ash gates from House Orlock in the next installment of the Studio Com uh, Necromunda campaign. I'll scoot, because I think it's like a battle report. Oh, cute. Lady Hera Helmera, shining light for Necromunda to follow. <laughs> hmm. So showcase the Somnus Fellowship by Jesse Parrott. 
Mm. Oh, look at little cute little rats. Whatever that fellow is created. Cute. All sorts of little custom good jobs there, I think. The Bemus. The Dingo's demise. And we wonder, who in the world is a Dingo? The Rust Warren Horror. Oh my gosh. That's cool. Wow. Another invention. Oops. Sorry. By Alexander at uh, the Axian city of Eldville. The carnival is about to begin. So let's see. A little story. Little story. Inside the studio. Fox chatter. Oh, the answers, I suppose. And that's it. Well, that was super fun. It always is. I hope you enjoyed it too. Like and subscribe if you did. And I will catch you in the next one. I'm currently working on uh, this fellow myself. Nearly done. Just got to get some more details on him. Emotech just recently came out. He's in Mephra Dynasty style. I hope you enjoy that. And I hope you enjoy the battle report that we're going to be putting out when I have a little more practice with my Tyranids. Um, my own Tyranids uh, in 10th edition Warhammer 40,000. I hope you enjoy it. That'll be out before the year's end. Okay, bye. Hello out there to the patrons and YouTube members of the channel. I really wanted to say how much I appreciate the help that you have been given me and the channel and I hope you're having a fantastic hobby time wherever you are. Here's a sneak peek at the upcoming paint with me that I hope you're going to enjoy as I'm painting Emotech, like I said, in the Mephrit Dynasty color scheme. I've been enjoying painting him and I hope you enjoy watching it.